Let's start these review problems here with a Snell's Law problem. Um, so we have a situation where a beam of light refracts as it goes from one substance to another. So of course we're going to use Snell's Law, n1 sine theta 1 equals n2 sine of theta 2 here. Um, and so we know our index of refraction in A, which I'll make substance 1, is 2.5. We also know the angle there is 15 degrees, so we can say 2.5 times sine of 15. And that's going to be equal to our index of refraction in substance 2, which is B here. Um, and so that's going to be, we don't know that index of refraction, but we do know our angle there is 28 degrees. Um, so this left side of the equation becomes 0 0.647 when we do that in our calculator. So that's going to be equal to N2 times the sine of 28 degrees. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides by sine of 28. Um, you certainly can get the decimal form of that number if you'd prefer, but sine of 28 is just a number. Um, so we're dividing both sides by it, which makes it go away on the one side. And we solve for N2, and we find that N2 is going to be equal to 1.38. Moving on to B here, um, we now are looking at uh, the refraction as it moves from B to C here. Um, so I'm not going to say that B is substance 1 and C is substance 2. Uh, we once again are going to be using Snell's Law, N1 sine of theta 1 equals N2 sine of theta 2. Um, N1 is going to be substance B now, so it's going to be this 1.38 that number that we just found, times the sine of, it's also 28 degrees. Um, that's a little geometry thing that this angle and this angle will be the same. Um, so it is the same angle as it was for the first refraction. Um, but that's going to be equal now to N2, which is for substance C. That is an index of refraction of 1. So 1 times sine of theta 2, and that's what we're solving for. So this left side of the equation um, becomes 0 0.647, and that's going to be equal to sine of theta 2. In order to solve for that, we're going to use that sine inverse function here. So we're going to take the inverse sine of both sides of this equation, um, and that allows us to solve for theta 2, and we find that theta 2 then is going to be equal to 40.3 degrees. Uh, last question here, and this is really just a conceptual one. Um, we want to know uh, in which substance does light travel the fastest, and that is going to be substance C, um, and that is because it has the lowest index of refraction, the lowest end value. We keep in mind that index refraction really measures how slow light travels, so the lower the index of refraction, the faster light is actually traveling. Moving on to this next one, um, this one really is mainly a geometry problem here, um, but there is a little bit of information about mirrors. Um, so we ultimately want to figure out what this unknown angle is over here, but I'm just going to start at this first angle here, um, that angle right there, and think about what I know. So I know that this angle is 63 degrees, that's given. This one then will be 90 minus 63, um, or 27 degrees. So that's the first thing I'm going to do. The second thing is I know that if this angle here is 27 degrees, this angle here is also going to be 27 degrees, and that just comes from the fact that um, this is a mirror, and the law of reflection tells us that whatever angle light goes in at, it will be reflected at the same angle. From there, I'm going to think about this triangle here um, to get my next angle. And so with that, I know that the angles of a triangle must add up to 180. So I can say 180 is going to be equal to 27 plus 124 plus this angle right here, which we'll call theta. And if we solve for theta, we get that that theta is going to be equal to 29 degrees. And then for my final bit here, um, I know that if this is 29 degrees, this will also be 29 degrees, um, and again, that's because it is a mirror image, so that final angle that I'm looking for is 29 degrees. Um, and that's just because of the, the fact that it's another mirror it's bouncing off of here. Next one we have is just a conceptual question. Was the main difference um, between a real and a virtual 
uh, image. Um, one main difference, and really the biggest one, is real images, the rays actually converge, all right, and they do not for uh, a virtual image. So that's probably the biggest difference. The other one um, that we could say is real images are inverted and virtual images are upright. Um, that would be the other big difference between real and inverted images. We're now going to work through a few ray diagrams here. Um, so for this first one, um, we have a converging lens here. Here's our object. So we'll go ahead and draw our three rays. First we have that parallel ray in parallel and out through the focus. Next we have that focal ray which goes in through F prime and out parallel. Um, and then last but not least we have that central ray which goes directly through the center of the lens. And so we end up finding that these rays converge right around here. Um, and so we can go ahead and draw our image. Moving on to our next uh, situation, we have another converging lens here, but now we notice that the object is inside the focal length, um, so that will mean that we're going to eventually need to trace back here. But let's go ahead and start doing our three rays to begin with. So our first ray goes in parallel and out through the focus. Our second ray goes in through F prime, but remember when F prime is behind it, we actually start with F prime, go up through the top of the object and then we go out parallel and our third ray goes directly through the center. We're then going to go ahead of course and trace back these three rays. We see they don't converge and so once we do that we trace them back and we find that those rays converge at this point here and so we can go ahead and draw the image of our object at that point. Moving on to our final ray diagram here, we now have a diverging lens. Keep in mind the focal point is here and F prime is now on the opposite side. So we're going to go ahead and once again draw our three rays. The idea is always the same, um, but the way they look obviously is slightly different. So our first ray goes in parallel and it goes out through the focus, but the focus is back here. So what we're going to do is we're going to say it goes out along a line with the focus. The second ray is going to go in through F prime, which is over here, so we're going to draw a line towards F prime. We won't actually get to that point um, because what's going to happen is we're going to hit the lens and we'll bend and go parallel first. And then our final ray goes straight through the center. That one really doesn't change at all. Once again, we have to go ahead and trace these three rays backwards, and we're going to end up seeing that it converges right around here, and so we can go ahead and draw our image at that point. Let's move on to some math uh, problems here with lenses. So for this first one, um, a pair of reading glasses is a focal length of 0 0.5, that is our F, and an object is placed 0.2 meters, in this case a book, from uh, the glasses, and so that's going to be our DO. So we can go ahead and um, solve for the location of the image by using 1 over F equals 1 over DI plus 1 over DO. Um, so we can say 1 over 0 0.5 equals 1 over di plus 1 over 0 0.2. Um, we can go ahead and subtract uh, the 1 over 0 0.2. So we have 1 over 0 0.5 minus 1 over 0 0.2 equals 1 over di. This left side of the equation gives a value of negative 3. So that's equal to 1 over di. And you can either um, put that negative 3 over 1 and cross multiply here, or we can use that x to the minus 1 button to raise both sides to the negative first power. And when we do that, we find that di is going to be negative 0.33 um, meters, um, which would mean it's a virtual image. That's what that negative means. For our second part, we want to find the magnification. So for magnification, we can say it's either negative di over do, or we can say it's hi over ho. Um, since we only know di and do here, we'll obviously use that first one. And so we find that our magnification is going to be negative, negative 0 0.33. Um, keep in mind that there will be two negatives on top there, because di itself is negative here, and our equation has that negative. And then we'll divide by our do, which was 0 0.2. And so we find that our magnification becomes a positive 1.66 um, or 1.7 if we round to one decimal place. Uh, keep in mind we usually add in that plus sign there, um, even though 
uh, it's kind of redundant to include it. Um, it's just a typical convention for finding magnification. Let's move on to our next problem here. So we have a fishbowl acting like a converging lens. So an object located 8 centimeters behind the fishbowl, that's going to be our DO there, um, has a height of 14 centimeters, that would be HO, the height of the object, and it appears to be 19 centimeters tall, which is HI, and upright, and that tells us that it's going to be a positive image height. So the first thing we want to know is um, what is the location of the image. Um, so we aren't worried about our focal length, we don't actually know that quite yet. So I'm going to use my other equation, m equals negative di over do, which is also equal to hi over ho. And we're just going to use this part of the equation here. So we can say negative di, that's what we're solving for, over 8 is going to be equal to 19 over 14. Um, a few different ways of solving this, but I would just go ahead and cross multiply here. And so we get negative 14 di is equal to 152. We multiply that 8 and the 19. And so we end up finding that di is going to be equal to negative 10.86 centimeters. Uh, from there, the next part of the question asks us to find our focal length. And so now we can go to our 1 over f equals 1 over di plus 1 over do. We know both of those distances. So we can say 1 over f is equal to 1 over negative 10.86 plus 1 over 8. That left side of the equation ends up giving us a value here of 0 0.0329. And from there, we once again can use that x to the negative first power button to raise both sides to the negative first power and solve for f. And we're left with a focal length here of positive 30.4 centimeters, um, which would mean, I know it didn't ask this, but that would mean it is a converging lens because we have a positive focal length. Um, one other quick thing to keep in mind, it makes sense that this di is negative. Um, and the reason is we have a upright image. Upright images are virtual, which have a negative di. And our final problem here, um, the lens in a slide projector focuses the image of a slide onto a screen. Um, the slide is placed 8 centimeters from the slide projector. That's going to be our do there. Um, and it forms an image 215 centimeters um, from the lens. And so that's going to be our di. So the first thing we want to do is determine what type of image is formed. Um, this must be a real image. And the key is because it's onto a screen. Um, anytime we have an image that appears on a screen, it must be a real image. The second question asks us to find the focal length. And so in order to do that, I can say 1 over f equals 1 over di plus 1 over do. Um, I know both my di and do. My di is that 215 there. Um, and it's going to be positive because it's a real image. Um, and then do is going to be 8. Um, do obviously is always positive. So we don't have to worry about the sign there. So 1 over f is equal to 0 0.1297. Um, probably more decimal places than you need to take. But I would just use the exact value in your calculator. We'll raise both sides to the negative first power. And we go ahead and solve for our focal length here. And we get an answer of 7.71 centimeters. Um, once again, this would be a converging lens, which makes sense because that's the only type of lens that can form a real image. Diverging spreads the light rays out, um, so obviously they can't actually appear on a screen. 